Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 10 present. Thank you. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is the approval of the minutes from our last city council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion to approve. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is public forum. There's no one this evening. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to mayor's announcements. A um, couple of uh, events that are uh, uh, time sensitive. The uh, farmer's market, the 30th season, uh, will begin. Uh, that will be a Wednesday and a Saturday farmer's market uh, through the end of summer. The Emerald Ashbor, uh, we have a special impact information session at Elwood H. May Environmental <coughs> Park. That will be held on Thursday, June 13th at 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. There's a hazardous waste collection scheduled on June 14th and 15th. The uh, June 14th will be held at the County Highway Department, Southside Shed on the Frontage Road, south of Sheboygan. And then on Saturday the 15th, there will be another one held at the County Highway Department in Cascade. And on June 15th, uh, we'll be holding another Bike with Mike session. Uh, we'll be meeting at the Horace Mann School parking lot on Georgia Avenue, and the route will uh, end at Kiwanis Park, and that's scheduled to start at 2 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, the Sheboygan Pops Band is going to begin their schedule. The Pops Band is uh, performing on June 12th for their first concert of the season at 6.30 at the Fountain Park Band Shell, and they will perform every other Wednesday after that through the summer. At this time, um, council leadership, myself, Alderpersons Wolf, and uh, Donahue will not be able to make the July 1st council meeting. So uh, the plan is, is to cancel that meeting. Now, if matters that uh, need to be brought up cannot wait uh, till the following meeting on July 15th, a special council will be meeting will be scheduled on another day. Currently, there are no matters that can't wait until the, the July 15th meeting, so the plan will be to uh, just cancel that one council meeting. Next, I'd like to make a few comments about the capital improvements program that's on the agenda tonight. There's really two things on the agenda. You know, one is uh, bonding for the 2019 capital improvements program, and the other is... Um, and there's a number of items that we're going to be refinancing to gain lower interest rates in the future. But I want to talk about the 2020 to 2014 Capital Improvements Program, which would determine our bonding for projects in 2020. Uh, when the Capital Improvements Commission held their first meeting, there was a lot of discussion about past years of bonding near the $5 million threshold. Um, we were instructed to rank all the projects after presentations on them. And at our next meeting, uh, all, uh, Administrator Hufflin uh, kind of took me by surprise, and I think some of the other committee members, that he was going to be capping the 2020 bonding program at $3.5 million, removing uh, $1.5 million, uh, the majority of which were street projects. Uh, this reduction was not only for 2020, but he also proposed reducing spending by $6 million over the five years of the capital improvements program. Now, he did this for some very good reasons. He wanted to keep the debt payments that we currently have uh, really level so that as we go into the future, we won't have to raise taxes at all uh, in order to support the debt payments uh, for our, our bonding. But if we would bond for $5 million rather than the 3.5, it was estimated that the levy would have to be increased by $0.30 cents to support that additional debt. 
Um, when it came to streets, that really concerns me. Uh, our street resurfacing was complicated by the, this year by the fact that, that the North Avenue project uh, was a complete street reconstruction, and it came in over the estimated budget. The, part, the project was partially funded by the state of Wisconsin, and the state was not able to increase their funding, and the city of Sheboygan needed to fund the entire bid amount the for the North Avenue project was three million nine ninety two seven fifty eight. The actual low bid for the project was four million eight forty six eight eleven, and the difference between the two uh, was eight hundred and fifty four thousand dollars that the city had to pick up. Because of this unanticipated cost increase, the city had to push back the Superior Avenue resurfacing project from North Taylor Drive to North 29th Street to a 2020 construction time frame uh, due to this project overrun. The community um, in the past has really appreciated that we've been increasing the miles of streets that we've resurfaced every year and hit them high of 7.2 miles last year. The 2019 street resurfacing mileage has already been reduced because of two expensive projects, the Penn Avenue Bridge and the North Avenue Project. And uh, just because they were very expensive projects, we won't get as many miles out of those as we would normally get with our normal program. Um, when we get to item 4.1 on the agenda, I hope that uh, we will consider amending the capital improvements program uh, to move the Geely Avenue Project from 3rd to Calumet in the amount of 800000 and move it up from 2021 to 2020. Uh, it's originally in there for a million dollars, but at the uh, last meeting, um, Ryan Sasma said that uh, this is a project where we'll be able to get some savings by uh, buying our blacktop from the county, and that $800,000 would cover that. Many residents have told me, and I know some of you have mentioned it to me as well, that they really want us to take care of our streets and keep on an aggressive program and not let things like this slow us down. Uh, and they've also said that they're willing to pay, make additional tax payments to keep that resurfacing on schedule. If we don't, they're just going to pay for it and require repairs. So I thank you for your consideration on that. Next, we'll go on to hearings. Item 2.1 is hearing number one of 1920 pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices sent by the city clerk. There is a hearing to amend the city of Sheboygan's official zoning map to change the use district classification of 1316 Niagara Avenue from class urban industrial to class urban commercial. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close. Thank you for that motion and support. <coughs> All those in favor, please signify by, oh, let's see, we have to have a, a roll call on that. Um, City Clerk, how are we doing this? Are we uh, using our computers or a voice vote? They're not working. They're not working. Then we're doing voice. Yeah. Are you really? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Alderperson Wolf? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Ackley? Aye. Feldy? Aye. That's a lot of aye. <laughs> Ten ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.13. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive and file all our O's, receive all our C's, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Thank you for that motion and support. Those documents are before us on the motion. Is there any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Wolf? Aye. Thank you. Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Sabaglio? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Feldy? Aye. 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 Aye
number 25 of 1920 by the City Planning Commission, to whom was referred resolution number 17 of 1920 by Alderpersons Wolf and Sorensen, approving the Capital Improvements Program recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission for the program period of 2020 to 2024 and adopting the program for implementation and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Wolf? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Baglio? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Acne? Aye. Feldy? Aye. Ten ayes. Motion passes. Items uh, 4.2 and 4.3 will be referred to various committees under resolutions. Items 5.1 through 5.5 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, um, items 6.1 through 6.12 are all for uh, various bond issues. City Attorney, can we uh, group these together? Yes. Thank you. So I'll have to read all of these first, and then we uh, accept a motion on all of them. Item 6.1 is RC number 28 of 1920 by Finance and Personnel Committee. Two is referred resolution number 18 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Boring, submitting the initial resolution authorizing general obligation bonds in the amount not to exceed uh, 1.1 million for garbage disposal projects and recommends adopting the resolution. Item 6.2 is RC number 29 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 19 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren, submitting initial resolution authorizing general obligation bonds in the amount not to exceed $110,000 for acquisition of fire department equipment and recommends adopting the resolution. Item 6.3 is RC number 30 of 1920 by the Finance Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 20 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren, submitting an initial resolution authorizing general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $278,000 for the construction of engine houses and recommends adopting the resolution. Item 6.4 is RC number 31 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom is referred resolution number 21 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren submitting an initial resolution authorizing the general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $2,722,000 for street improvement projects and recommends adopting the resolution. Item 6.5 is RC number 32 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 22 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boring, submitting an initial resolution authorizing general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $760,000 for bridge projects and recommends adopting the resolution. Item 6.6 .6 is RC number 33 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 23 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren, submitting an initial resolution authorizing general obligation bonds in the amount not to exceed $107,000 for library projects. Item 6.7 is RC number 34 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 24 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren, submitting an initial resolution authorizing general obligation bonds in the amount not to exceed $123,000 for parks and public lands projects and recommends adopting the resolution. Item 6.8 is RC number 35 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 25 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren, submitting an initial resolution authorizing general obligation bonds in the amount not to exceed uh, $4,225,000 for community development, development projects in tax incremental districts and recommends adopting the resolution. 
Item 6.9 is RC number 36 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 26 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Boring, directing the publication and notice to electors relating to the bond issues and recommends adopting the resolution. Item 6.10 is RC number 37 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 27 of 1920 by all their persons, Donahue and Bourne, providing for the sale of not to exceed 4225000 general obligation uh, community development bond series 2019B and recommends adopting the resolution. Item 6.11 is RC number 38 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 28 of 1920 by Alder Persons Donahue and Bourne, providing for the sale of approximately $6,655,000 in general obligation uh, corporate purpose bond series 2019A and recommends adopting the resolution. Item 6.12 is RC number 39 of 1920 uh, by Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 29 of 1920 by Alder Persons Donahue and Bourne, providing for the sale of approximately $3,315,000 in taxable general obligation refunding bonds, Series 2019C, and recommends adopting the resolution. I need a motion on those items. First of all, Mayor, congratulations on getting through it all. Yes. Um, I move that item 6.1 be received and that the resolutions be adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the motions? Alderperson Donahue and then Boren. us understand uh, what the process is and why we're going through it. Just briefly, if that's all right. Thank you for that suggestion. Administrator Hoffman. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Uh, based upon the listing of these 12 agenda items, there are, they can really be grouped into three different uh, debt-related issuance for 2019. Uh, it is late spring, early summer, uh, when the city typically issues new debt. Uh, that allows the city to uh, for the most part, have firm costs associated with projects uh, due to the fact that most of our borrowing is associated with street projects and we've opened those construction bid documents. So we have a, a firm grasp on the costs associated with, with these projects. Uh, the first grouping of uh, debt is associated with a general obligation bond. Uh, the repayment schedule is 15 years. Uh, traditionally, uh, the city tends to borrow uh, a shorter debt uh, service schedule, uh, typically 10 years or less, and those are referred to as notes. So anything longer in a debt service schedule are bonds. In addition to the projects uh, that are listed on your agenda from fire trucks, new windows at fire stations, North Avenue, Penn Avenue Bridge, uh, Mead Public Library projects, and tennis courts uh, at Ballrath Park, roughly 5.2 million for these projects. In addition to that, 1.4 million is associated with a 2012 um, uh, refunding uh, of that 2012 uh, promissory note. By incorporating the 1.4 into this uh, 2019 debt issuance, uh, this will give the city additional flexibility on uh, the repayment schedule associated with the 1.4 in uh, outstanding um, debt. Uh, so as the city looks uh, to, to beyond 2019, it simply gives the city more flexibility in, in order to minimize future tax rate uh, related increases. Uh, the second uh, related uh, bonding matter is uh, associated with our tax incremental financing districts. Again, the expectation is that new development and the new and, uh, and the associated developers of that new uh, tax base 
will be res solely responsible for the repayment of the debt associated with a uh, little over four million dollars. Uh, the repayment schedule uh, associated with this is 19 years. Uh, typically, the TID district life is uh, close to 28 uh, years. Uh, so the hope and the goal is that uh, this debt will be paid off within uh, the life of the TIP districts. TIP district number 17, 18, and 19 are associated with uh, the projects. Uh, it includes um, some title work survey work for acquisition of Union Pacific uh, uh, right away. This is uh, half a block north of Indiana Avenue, uh, west of uh, 8th, uh, 8th Street. Uh, innovation district land acquisition, uh, some street improvements uh, surrounding the uh, what is underway, the Badger State Lofts conversion, uh, stormwater pond associated with a phase one of a single family <coughs> subdivision. Uh, this is in TID 18, which is east side of east of South Business Drive, east of the city's new uh, business park, uh, South Point Enterprise Campus. And then the last is uh, $400,000 associated with street improvement uh, as the city partners with a new condominium uh, development on uh, 15th uh, uh, Street. So again, roughly $4 million associated with that. The third doc, the third uh, funding is uh, $3.3 million, and this is solely a refunding. Uh, in comparing the current interest rate to the original interest rate of this 2010 uh, debt issuance, uh, the city can actually save uh, over a quarter of a million dollars over the life of the remaining uh, debt schedule. Uh, so the recommendation from our financial advisor and staff supports uh, those findings uh, for the city to refund uh, those original bonds issue new debt and save simply due to lower uh, interest rates at this time. The expectation is that the bonds will be sold on July 15th and so the money will be uh, in city's hand, hands uh, within a couple weeks following that, that uh, issue, uh, that uh, uh, sale of notes and bonds again uh, mid-July. Thank you. Person Donahue, anything else? No, thank you. That was very helpful. Very good. Alder Person Warren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Daryl, on item number 6.1, uh, I'm having trouble recalling uh, that $1.1 million for garbage disposal projects. Is that kind of seed money for us going into the uh, new garbage system, or what is that for? I can't recall. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, it is. It's uh, part only part of the costs associated with the city's purchase of new garbage and recycling trucks. Okay. Uh, this does not include the carts. Uh, the remaining, which is expected to be an additional <coughs> million, will need to, uh, what is proposed is for the city to use the fund balance within the motor vehicle fund okay. for the remaining trucks. Um, the funding or financing associated with the carts, whether it be garbage or recycling, that will come before you um, in the next four or five months. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, ask the clerk to please call the roll. Alder Person Wolf? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Thorne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Savaglio? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Kathleen? Aye. Aye. Ten ayes. Motion passes. Let's move on to item 6.13, RC number 40 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 31 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Boren, authorizing the city staff to begin the process of selling two city-owned vacant lots, lots 11 and 12 on the northwest corner of Erie Avenue and North 10th Street, and recommends adopting the resolution with an amendment. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you. I move to uh, receive the report of the committee and adopt the substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have Chad explain what is going to be happening to those lots down there once... Uh, the uh, sale is made. Chad, please proceed. 
So these are the last couple remaining lots that are as part of the Habitat project on the corner of North 10th and Erie Avenue. Late last year, the city worked with the county who foreclosed on these lots under in-rem tax foreclosure, uh, made a payment to the county for $66,000 to make the county whole on their taxes and outstanding fees of the city. Um, we use block grant dollars for that, so the intent is to sell these two lots as we have with the other four lots on that block to Habitat for Humanity for $10,000. The value of the $10,000 is based on the fact that they can include that in the mortgage on the properties that they then sell and finance to interested property owners that ultimately build the house there. So the intent would be uh, to sell these two lots to Habitat and then hopefully in late 2019 or early 2020, they can build an additional two homes and finish up that block. Any other discussion? Alder Person Sorensen? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess I got another question for Chad. Um, I'm just kind of curious, um, the, how do we come up with the $10,000 um, for the price of the, the, the lots? I'm just kind of curious about that. I know that there are some municipalities across the state that just give the land to um, their habitat agencies. I, I definitely think in this area, you know, when we were looking at building new homes um, within the community, um, i just just kind of curious if there's any way that we can help support this nonprofit and their important mission. Um, I understand the city needs revenue where we can get it, um, but that's just my comments. The 10000 was really put together because it was a value that was um, an improved value for the lot that Habitat could include in their mortgage. And the, and the, you know, the person purchasing the home could finance that, and it was a realistic amount, and it allowed the city to get a little bit, given that we put a lot of time and effort into these uh, properties. It's not just like we've got a vacant lot somewhere that it's easy just to deed over for a buck. We've got, you know, by the time we're done, we'll have over $750,000 into buying properties, tearing them down, replatting, and all of that. So it was a small token from Habitat side um, to help in the overall partnership. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, um, all the, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Wolf? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Thorne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Savaglio? Aye. Stacker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Ackley? Aye. Selby? Aye. Ten ayes. Motion passes. Under matters laid over, item 7.1 is RO number 20 of 1920 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 1 of 1920 by Alderperson Phillips and RO number 6 of 1920 by the City Clerk for an application from the City for a change in the zoning classification of property located at, six, at 1316 Niagara Avenue from Class Urban Industrial to Class Urban Commercial classification and recommends the approval of the general ordinance. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Uh, Chad Pelichek. Just in for, for, full disclosure, this is the vacant property that is east of the boat doctors. Um, there's a document on the council agenda that's being referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee, which is a contract for sale of land for that development. Um, this is to, set, to rezone the property uh, from the urban industrial to the urban commercial in order for the city to sell it to the developer and ultimately combine the parcels. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Wolf? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Thorne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Savaglio? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Ackley? Aye. Selby? Aye. Ten ayes. Motion passes. Under other matters authorized by law, I'll turn it over to City Attorney Charles Adams. 8.1 is an RO uh, by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2019, December 31, 2019, June 30, 2020, and June 30, 2021. That have referred to licensing hearings and Public Safety Committee. 
8.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2019 and June 30, 2021. It will also be referred to licensing hearings and public safety committee. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. Adjourned.